So, quick announcement before I start my video, and that is that I'm now streaming on Twitch. So every Monday at 7 p.m., at least for right now, I might change the schedule later, I am doing a DJ stream. So I'm mostly spinning goth with a, like, a little bit of industrial too. And also I'm occasionally going to be doing band interviews for EBM Worldwide. So mostly industrial interviews because it is, they're called EBM Worldwide. I'm hoping I might be able to interview more goth bands as well. But that might be separate from them because, again, the name. We'll see how things go. And I might even like want to interview other stuff too. That's something I'm hoping on doing more of. But yeah. So if you go on Twitch, you can like ask the band questions and as I'm doing the interview. Or if you miss it, it's all being posted on my YouTube channel. You may have already seen my interview with local Baltimore industrial band, Naja Bramora. I did that recently. So to check in my channel, you'll see the video if you're interested. I know some people might be just watching for the goth stuff. And if you're not interested in the industrial stuff, that's okay. But I know at least Naja Mora interview was interesting. Don't know if they'll all be that interesting, but hopefully. Anyway, we're going to get to today's topic, which is someone was asking me this question and, and said I should make a video on this, which is how, what kind of like equipment do you need to like get goth guitar sounds or to a lesser extent bass sounds since there's a, quite a bit of overlap. So what I'm not going to really do in this video is tell you how to like write goth music or like I need mean, the music theory behind it or whatever, because that's a pretty complicated topic. And I feel like if you try to sum it up in a video, you're mostly just going to like be explaining a paint by numbers approach. If you want to be like good at like writing goth music, you kind of just need to be like good at like playing your instrument and writing music in general. And then just like kind of like listen carefully to goth and non goth stuff because diversity and in influence is important. And see what works for you and then try and like incorporate it into your music kind of. But yeah, I, what I can tell people though is like how to get the sounds because like I don't really cover it much on my YouTube channel, but I'm like pretty into like guitar effects, music equipment, since all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to do like a quick video on just on like some tips for someone like getting started. Okay, what do I need to like get those goth guitar sounds? Because it might not be obvious to everyone who's not like experienced in music making. So first question you might want to know is just with the real basics, what kind of guitar or amp or amp sim do I need? And I'm going to, this might be slightly controversial, but I'm going to say it does not really matter. As long as you can get like a nice bright clean sound, unless you want to play always distorted, like anything will mostly do. There might be like a few one trick pony, like metal stuff that might not work. But for the most part, don't worry about it so much. Get something you like and you should be good. However, pedals are kind of like a little bit more important. Now you don't really necessarily need pedals if you have effects built into your amp or your software or a multi-effect or whatever. I'm just doing it in a pedal power pedal basis just for demonstration purposes. If you have this all built into something, you can just use that. But yeah, you can pretty much do goth guitar sounds with like three pedals. We'll cover a ton of ground. We'll cover most of your basics. So I'm just going to go over the three real quick first, what you need, and then I'll go over each of them in more depth. So first of all, you're probably going to want like some kind of overdrive or distortion unless you're getting that from your amp, which a lot of people might. So you could even do it in two if you've like got a, like a dirty channel switching amp or whatever. You want like some kind of modulation like chorus or flanger. And you want like something to kind of like create a sense of space like reverb or delay. With those three, you can cover a lot of ground, especially if you pick the right kind of pedals. And now I'm going to kind of like go into more depth on like each of the three categories to kind of like give more advice about it. So for overdrive or distortion, either one is fine. It doesn't really matter too much. Which one you want to use will just depend on what you think sounds best to you. I mean, if you're trying to go for like for early 80s post-punky sounds, you might more want like a lower gain overdrive pedal or just like more classic distortion pedal. If you're going more for like death rock or more harder goth rock, you might want to get a distortion pedal or what might be called an amp in a box, which it's a distortion pedal that's specifically meant to usually sound like a loud Marshall amp, but it might be other map amps like a Fender amp, a Vox amp. High watt amp. It could be like all sorts of different amps. It's just usually Marshall amps because those are like the most popular. And those will like get you more of like that loud amp sound that like say 
a lot of like the old, more old school distortion pedals won't. But again, it's just down to personal preference. The only thing I won't recommend is you probably don't want to use a fuzz. Because the thing about fuzz is it's got a, like a certain thing it does to your sound. If, if you've ever played a lot of fuzz pedals, you'll know what I mean, unless a big muff. Big muffs I kind of consider more like, almost like a distortion than a fuzz. So oftentimes they don't have the same thing. But like if the fuzz, it's like very harmonically dense. It's very thick. And when you're playing like a lot of like finely detailed playing or stuff that's not going to come through in a fuzz if you try to play like any sort of like chords or anything that's not a basic power chord it's going to sound garbled probably not what you want for goth unless maybe like use it as a special effect on occasion but it's not going to be like probably your like main go-to sound so for the most of the rest of the effects i'm gonna there's kind of like a secret there all based off of mostly the same concept, which is that of a, what's called a delay line. And this was a kind of technology that really became super available starting in the mid seventies that kind of allowed goth guitar to kind of like develop. And same thing with like a lot of the new wave post-punk guitar that was popping up at the same time. So pretty much what a delay line does, is kind of like you're taking your guitar, you play it, and then the pedal makes a copy of it and plays it again slightly later. And then it like does different things to that like copied sound to create all these different effects. It's actually like super versatile. And if you like can like get a pedal that's that's a, has enough parameters and flexibility, you can like create most of these types of effects all in one pedal. Anyway, yeah, so this was technology that really started to become like super available in the um later half of the 70s. You did have like technology that could do these kinds of sounds before, but it was like big electrical mechanical units, so pretty expensive. By the late 70s, you could have like little pedals that could do it if you wanted. So we're gonna start off with modulation, specifically coarse and flanger, because those are the two most important ones. So coarse and flanger, they are kind of very similar effects because again they're both using the delay line and what they're doing is they're like modulating the delay line which pretty much means you take the delay and you're kind of moving it back and forth in time so you're making this delay shorter than longer shorter than longer you're kind of like it's kind of like moving on its own so it kind of creates a pitch warbly sound so the main difference between the flanger and the chorus is that the flanger, it's got a much shorter delay time. Both of them are really short and aren't really like perceivable. So you're not like hearing an echo like as it repeats your signal. It's more of like laying it on top of the other one. With the flanger, it's done with like super short delay. So it creates something called like a comb filter, which kind of makes, makes like a sharp ringing sound. Which kind of like, I got a flanger on here. This is a more subtle set flanger, kind of between a flanger and a chorus, but kind of sounds like this. Or if I turn it on distortion, you can really hear that sharper sound, kind of like a whooshy sound. And the whoosh kind of moves up and down as I just like strum that basic power chord. So yeah, the flanger kind of can like do almost like jet plane sounds. While the chorus is more of just almost sounding like you got like multiple guitars playing at once, they're slightly out of tune, kind of thickening the sound a little bit, are like the two main uses for both of them. But they can cross over into each other's territory quite a bit because sometimes chorus is actually kind of create that same comb filtery effect because they've got a shorter delay time than you'd think. It just doesn't get as sharp as a flanger. So importantly, there's like a few controls you need to know on these. You got, on most of them, you got like controls like speed and depth. So those just control the wobble. Speed is how fast the wobble is, depth is how deep. And you kind of want to set these, they kind of like interact with each other. So if you have high speed and high depth, it might get like super warpy and like out of tune sounding hard to play. So as you turn up the speed, you want to turn up down the depth, or as you turn down the speed, you want to turn up the depth to kind of compensate a little bit. So you can have like fast wobbly sounds like you might hear in Mephisto Waltz, or you can have much slower depth enhancers, or even whooshing. Like if you want to like a big slow jet plane whoosh, you might want to up the width and lower the speed to kind of like really feel that whoosh coming slowly down, crushing you or whatever. Some pedals will also have what's called 
a mix control or sometimes we'll call it an effect level. It's pretty much what it does is it controls the volume of your guitar versus the volume of the copied wobbly signal. So if you turn it all the way down, you're just hearing a guitar. If you turn it all the way up, they might be the same volume. The wobbly signal might be louder. And on some pedals like this one, it'll cut out the um, uh, guitar sound completely and you're only hearing the wobble. So it'll give you this super wobbly pitch vibrato sound. And it's good for making those like kind of really like spooky sounds. So we've also got manual or delay. They're the same control, the only difference is manual is like inverted. So a delay, the shortest delay time would be here, the longest would be here. With manual, it's the opposite. You crank it all the way up and the delay time is the highest and you turn it all the way down and it's the lowest. It's pretty much what this does is it controls like how much of a delay between your regular signal and the wobbly signal is. It does not create a delay so much to create an echo usually on these pedals, unlike on a delay where they're using that same line to do an echo. But what it can do is like control the sound of your instrument. So if you like put it really high up, you're kind of like getting that whooshy comb filtery flangey sound. As you like tweak it, it'll kind of be in like different frequency ranges. So all the way up, it's up in the high frequencies. As you lower it, it gets down to the lower frequencies. And then eventually you turn it to where you're not getting any like whooshy sounds. You're kind of like separating the sounds more. And if you turn it up enough, it'll all almost can sound like you got two guitars playing at once. And eventually you might even hear like almost a sh super short echo to it. One thing that's also important to note is like the higher you turn this up, the lower you'll want to turn down your depth because this is when you turn the delay time up, it's giving it more time to wobble. So you want to lower down the depth of the wobble to compensate. And also last but not least is really only going to be on flan flanger pedals, not on choruses. Usually we have like what's called regeneration, resonance, feedback. They're all the same thing. Pretty much what that's doing is it's sending the echo into itself and it'll make that like whooshy sound all the more sharper. A big mistake people make with flangers is they turn this up halfway or more and then all they, they say, oh, I can only get jet plane sound out of. You want to kind of like lower it, start with it low. I recommend starting it with it all the way off and then slowly turning it up till you get the kind of like sharpness you want. That way you can like control the sound. Unless you like the big jet plane sound, then you might want to crank it up more. But sometimes be careful with how much you crank it up too, because it can get really sharp and head piercing if you really turn some of these up. Also worth noting, some flanders have what's called negative feedback versus positive feedback. And pretty much the difference between the two is it's like, think of like a vacuum cleaner, it's like switching it from blow for positive feedback to sucked for negative feedback. So kind of like a different resonance to it and especially if you're using like the negative feedback you can kind of almost get wah sounds kind of like you know like the wah pedals that make those vocally sounds you can kind of do that with those so if you're looking at flanger i think it's really handy feature to have the positive negative feedback if you see that option because it gives you quite a bit more diversity so anyway on my guitar i've kind of like got my delay and my flanger on it i've got the flanger set pretty subtle to kind of make make chorusy sounds too because honestly, I'd say if you have to get one, a flanger can do what a chorus can, but a chorus can't necessarily do what a flanger can. So this is kind of like an in-betweenish sound. It's you can hear a little bit of whooshing, but it's not like extreme. You kind of getting a little bit of whoosh with a lot, with a bit more warble. <laughs> And I know I'm just like playing basic chords because I'm, I'm trying to just like to get the sound to you rather than like show off any playing or whatever. Also, there's a, a few other modulation effects as well that can be interesting, but one that's in particularly important to kind of cover is a phaser. So a phaser kind of sounds like a flanger. It's also got whooshing, but it's a different kind of whooshing because rather than what's called a comb filter, it's got like a notch filter. So it's still like putting like little resonant ringy things in the sound, but there's less of them and they're spaced further apart. So it can oftentimes be a bit less harsh, especially if you turn like the feedback off. And a lot of phaser pedals tend to have simpler controls, but all the controls on a phaser work the same as on a flanger. And like the reason you might want a phaser instead of flanger is if you're already using chorus and you want to put on a whooshing sound on top of that, 
the phaser is not going to add any more pitch wobble. It's only going to add the whoosh. So you might not have as much different pitch wobbly, like clashing with each other if you combine the two. Of course, like with goth music, a lot of musicians will turn on a chorus and a flanger at once, unlike in a lot of other styles. So it's not that all that uncommon where you're putting like a flanger on a chorus or a phaser on a chorus or, or stacking multiples of these. So you don't necessarily just need one. If you want a chorus and a flanger, that's probably ideal. But if you got to stick with just one, I feel like flangers will cover the most amount of ground unless you don't care for the sound and you just want the chorus. So we also now we're going to go to like the more like space addy sounds. So like your delays and reverbs. I'm going to address the reverbs first because I feel like it's a bit of almost an overrated effect when it comes to goth. Like people assume associated, oh, just turn up reverb. But a lot of times people just like turn up the reverb too much. And with, with reverb, you want to like use it judiciously. You want to like set it right. So it's not just like swallowing up the guitar and all you hear is the reverb and the guitar is like some faint, tiny signal in the background. But also kind of important to know that early goth bands, there were no reverb pedals back then. When they're playing live, they generally might have used a little bit of spring reverb from their amp or most likely just didn't use any at all. They would mostly just use delay instead, which made like the echo spacey sounds. You can set a reverb, a delay to sound like a reverb, but it's a bit harder to set a reverb to sound like a delay unless it's got like a pre-delay control. So I'm mostly going to focus on the delay because I really feel like that will get you a lot more, cover a lot more ground for one pedal. So important things to know with the delay controls is they're pretty much the same as a chorus or flanger. You've got your leveler mix, which is again, the ratio of your guitar sound to the sound of the echo. So if you, again, you, if you want to like kind of balance them, you probably don't want the echo to be as loud as the guitar because in the clash you kind of want to like set it to where you can hear it, but it's not like putting too much noise in the sound. So you want to be set this carefully. You got like your repeats or feedback, which is the same thing as the resonance regeneration on like flanger or whatever, just because it's when you've got much longer delay times, it's just going to make more echoes happen instead of weird ringy sounds. If you crank this up too much, you might get out of control feedback. So you, again, you want to be careful with this, make sure you're not like cranking all up and then you're like all of a sudden having like sounds like get super loud and got out of control feedback so be careful with this knob and you got time which is just how long between your original guitar sound and the sort of like echo sound happen this pedal doesn't have it but some delays have modulation where it wobbles the echo and it makes the wobbly sounds like you'll have on like a chorus or flanger but just on the echoes and not on your regular guitar sound so if you have a delay with that's like modulated or whatever it can even cover like some of your like chorus or your vibrato -y sounds just from the delay too. So again, it can get cover a lot of ground with one pedal. There's also like different like sort of types of delay, main three being analog, tape, and digital. And sort of again, like with the distortion and what guitar to use and what amp to use, which one you choose doesn't really matter a ton. Goth bands have like used all three of the main effects types. And there's like a few other ways of getting delay too, but those are like lower tech stuff that's a bit more obscure. We're not going to worry about every different way. We're just going to worry about the main three. So to kind of like describe the difference though, because there, there's a pretty notable difference between the three uh, for which one you might want is analog delays are kind of like pretty dark and murky sounding. So as the repeats go, they're going to slowly get darker and darker. Tape delays, they can be like a bit darker depending on the tape. Some might be brighter, some might be darker, but they also will tend to have a bit less bass in them. So they won't like muddy things up as much, but they'll still like be a little bit warmer and like less bright and pristine. And digital delays, those are like for your, sometimes they'll be completely pristine. Sometimes they'll be mostly pristine-ish. They're more for like a clear exact repeat of your sound. And what I got on here right now is I got like a digital delay to use as an example. So as you can see, you've got like a pretty clear repeat. If it was like an analog, it would sound a bit darker. Or if it was a delay, it would kind of like sound a bit darker, but also a bit brighter at the same time, kind of like more mid focus. So yeah, different goth bands have used different ones. Bands like Bauhaus, Fields of the Nephilim, Cocked Twins, Chameleons. They've all used like 
tape delays. So it's quite a few like old 80s bands that have used those. I've had some bands like use analog delays like The Cure and Death Cult, which was like the early version of The Cult that was more on like goth end of things. And like some of the later 80s bands and 90s bands, they'd use like more like bright digital sounds. And one other thing you might want to like consider with delay is also something called tap tempo. So what tap tempo does is it lets you like time the repeats with the tempo of the song. And for like a lot of goth stuff, it's not that important. But there are a few goth bands that kind of like do that tap tempo rhythmic delay thing. For example, if like you've ever heard U2, they do that a lot. But some goth bands do as well, like Brotherhood of Pagans. Um, Die Laughing would be like two examples of like some 90s bands. I know not the most super well-known examples because it's not like super popular on like the most big mainstream bands, but like a lot of smaller bands have done it. And it can kind of like give you, you know, I'll, I'll kind of do an example. I'm going to kind of mute the guitar as I play it a little bit just so you can like hear how it works. <laughs> And I know not the most cleanest playing, it's just like a quick example, but you can kind of see how like the repeats are kind of like meshing with the playing, almost like I'm like doubling up the notes a little bit. So it's kind of a trick some goth bands do, some don't. And it might be something you might want to consider if you're ever interested in that style of playing. You might want something with tap tempo. This has it, it's not a very usable tap tempo. Like other ones will ha have like specific timing subdivisions that'll like fit better with your playing and give you a lot of options, separate switch or whatever. They do tend to be expensive though. So you're probably not like gonna get, some of the cheaper delays will have tap tempo, but it's more like a deluxe feature, but it can be really useful if that's important to your playing. And yeah, that pretty much covers most of the basic effects. It covers a lot of territory. Just with like three effects, you can cover a whole lot. Like right now, I've just got like two on because I'm playing my guitar clean, but. But it's got like the flanger and it's got the delay. And as you can kind of hear, it already almost kind of sounds like a typical goth guitar sound just with those two. And again, I apologize for kind of like sloppy playing. Pretty much, I have a problem where once I hit record, like it all goes to like crap or whatever. All of a sudden, I like mess up when I normally wouldn't. And it, it's something I really need to work on, but that's a topic for something else. So anyway, yep, those are pretty much the basics. One thing I will also say, as you can see, I'm getting the effect sounds, but my pedals are here. So what I've been using to get the sounds is something called a Zoom Multi Stomp. And if you're ever thinking, oh, I just want to like get a like more affordable multi effects, get it all at once for now, and maybe look into pedals later. If you're trying to do that, I do recommend the Zoom Multi Stomp because it's fairly affordable. Like, I mean, 130 isn't like super cheap, but it is like made out of metal. It's like gig worthy. It's not gonna like go crunch if you step on it. And because it's small and compact, and it's actually got like a wide variety of effects, some of them are pretty weird. So even as you get pedals later, it will kind of like grow with you. You can still have always have a place for it on your board. So if you're looking to do like try and get all the sounds in one pedal, that's the one I would like recommend most. Anyway, I hope people found this helpful. And I guess I will see people for next time. And I will have a video coming up soon, hopefully, if everything lines up right. Because pretty much I'll tell you what the video is going to be. It's kind of going to be... Not like your traditional haul video, but I got a bunch of like tough to find goth CDs for my DJ library. So I'm going to like go over them for like sort of like a showcase of lesser well known, less, less known bands. Kind of like talk a little bit about them as I show you some of the CDs I got. Hopefully I'll be able to do that unless something really weird goes wrong with the mail. Anyway, I will see everyone next time. Hope everyone has a good rest of your day.